from Hollywood, The Barbara Stanwyck Show. Good evening. Tonight, your gas company playhouse presents a three-character melodrama, Night Visitor. I play the wife of a wealthy doctor. Our guest star, Julie London, appears as the money-hungry visitor, and Michael Ansara is featured as my butler. Bob and Wanda Duncan wrote the original teleplay especially for this program, and Don Medford directed it. Blackmail and attempted murder are elements of the suspenseful story. And now in just 60 seconds, the first act of Night Visitor. Yes. Yes, I think we can make it tonight. Mrs. Andrews is leaving for London tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. She's already let her maid go. I'll be driving her to the airport first thing in the morning. Carl. Yes, Mrs. Andrews. I've got to run. I'll talk to you later. Oh, Carl, I'm just about packed. Maybe you should have kept Marie until tomorrow. Huh. I'm not that helpless. I always used to pack for Tom when he went to the medical conventions. He... He liked to travel when he had the time for it. The uh, plane takes off at 9. We should leave here around 7.30. There's lots of traffic that early. Don't you love the way it feels? Mm, new money. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here, two months' salary. Here, two months' salary. I only got one coming. It's too much, Mr. Oh, Andrew. No such thing as too much. I learned that a long time ago. Money's the only thing that never lets you down. Now, uh, oh, yes, your reference. You might try the Johnsons. Their man quit last week. Yeah, their man. Now, let's see. Call Liz Parrington in the morning. Tell her I can't make her cocktail party. George Carley's lure. <laughs> Grace Carley in a grass skirt. That I can do with her. Oh, let them read about me in the newspapers. That is, if they ever get sober enough to read. Uh, oh, Carl, pack these and send to me in London. I gave you my sister's address. Yes, ma'am. And Mrs. Wilkins will be down from the Bel Air house tomorrow. Tell her to put these in storage. Can you remember all that? Sure. And um, call Dr. Andrews. Find out what he wants to do with all this junk. No, better still, pack it up and send it to him. At the Bel Air house? All except this. I bought it for him for our next anniversary. 20 years. You shoot, Carl. No, ma'am. Oh, hang it over your fireplace. I don't have a fireplace. Well, do anything you want with it. Just get rid of it. Yes, ma'am. Carl, did he ever bring her here? He was only here once in the past six months, the time he came down to see you. She wouldn't have the taste for it. She's a common little thing. If that's my husband, I don't want to talk to him. The Andrews residence? Uh, no, sir. She's not here. She went... Well, yes, sir, but... All right. Hold on, please. It's Dr. Andrews. He says he'll keep calling you all night if he has to. He knows you're here. Where is he, Bel Air? No, here in Laguna at the new hotel. I'll take it down here. Tom, I don't want to be rude, but I'm in a hurry. No, you can't come out here. I'm leaving for Europe first thing in the morning. I'm going to stay with Eunice for a few months and I... Tom, I've said all I'm going to say and don't call again because I won't answer. How can a man have such conceit? He'd still be in that smelly little clinic in Alvarado Street if I hadn't pushed him out of it. Will you need me anymore tonight? No, go to bed. But be sure and wake me at 7. I'm... Pound on the door if you have to. I'm going to take a sleeping pill. Yes, ma'am. No, better make it 6.30. I... 
I have to buy some traveler's checks at the airport. All right, 6.30. Oh, uh, good night. Good night. Mrs. Andrews? Yes? I want to talk to you. It's very important. It's, um, well, it's about your husband. My husband? Can I come in? Wow. Wow, we. Well. Silver. Real silver. Yes, from Chile. I know. He told me about it. Who told you about it? Your husband. Dr. Andrews? I've never been in a room like this before. It's money. All money. You know what I mean? You said you wanted to talk about Tom. <laughs> My favorite subject. You know why? Because he's rich. Well, I've seen you someplace. <laughs> Sure you have. But I can't place you. Well, I'll give you a clue. Would you care for a cocktail before dinner, madam? P.S., you're a waitress. With a little pin that says Julie. Hey, you're sharp. Tom said you would remember me. Ah, yes, Tom. Your favorite subject. He's a sweet man, your husband. We're good friends. I'll spell it out for you if you want me to. When did you meet him? I met him here in February, on Lincoln's birthday. Has he ever taken you to Ensenada? Just below Tijuana. Oh, very romantic, Ensenada. Yes, it is, isn't it? He uh, was very lonesome after you left the clinic. Oh, not that I blame you, sweetie. Who wants to work in an old clinic after you've married the doctor? I married him before he got the clinic. I helped him build it. Good for you. I think a woman should enjoy life when she can afford it. And you sure can afford it. Well, how much does this chair cost? A couple of hundred dollars. But you didn't come here to price the furniture. Oh, but I did. I want to see what money can buy. Because I have something to sell. My husband's reputation. Yes, ma'am. What makes you think I'm interested in saving his reputation? Well. He's the goose that lays the golden eggs. You see, I went to him as a patient, and he, uh... Well, I don't think he could live it down. People gotta have confidence in their doctors, sweetie, if you know what I mean. How much do you think his reputation is worth? <sighs> Ten thousand dollars. I've always wanted money, and you have it. We'll form a kind of, uh, share the wealth club. Oh, I see. You and I. You and I. Were you with him when he bought this? No. Then you didn't go to Mexico with him again last month. Well, he wanted me to, but I had one of my headaches, you know, the real wild kind. That's how we met. My, uh, headaches. I hope you're feeling better. Oh, he's a very good doctor. He, um... Did a lot for me, if you know what I mean. Yes, I know what you mean. One thing puzzles me, how you got past the receptionist. Tom's a pediatrician. He runs a children's clinic. I had an attack on the street. Blacked out. He found me. He couldn't have told you about this. I only bought it last week. He's never even seen it. 
Okay, so it was something else. I made a mistake. You made a lot of mistakes. He couldn't have met you on Lincoln's birthday. He was away attending a medical convention. He was gone the entire month of February. Then I met him in March. You have the right month, the wrong girl. Her name was Emily. That's a lie. It was me. As a matter of fact, you don't even know my husband. Oh, yes, I do, and I'm not letting him off the hook. Fine with me. I'm divorcing him, and when I get through with him, he won't have a penny. Get out of here before I call the police. That's not very smart, sweetie. Now, you have a whole safe full of money upstairs. You know it, and I know it. And I want it. Put that away. I'm not alone here. <laughs> Carl! <laughs> Carl, come in here! <laughs> Carl, get this girl out of here. <laughs> oh, you're so funny! <laughs> Carl. You know, you ought to see the expression on your face, sweetie. You really ought to. You see, uh, Carl's my ever loving. He's my husband. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mrs. Andrews wants to cancel the reservation on the London flight. No, uh, no, her plans are kind of indefinite right now. Yeah, thank you. You can't get away with this, Carl. No? In a day or two, one of my friends will be around to see why I don't answer the phone. What friends? Well, maybe Tom will. You took care of him. I don't think he'll call again. Pick up the pencil, sweetie, and write on the paper. How long have you been planning this, Carl? He didn't plan it. I did. Can't he speak for himself? We both planned it. So what difference does it make? I've been thinking about it for weeks. So what? But why? My baby doesn't want to be a handyman all his life. Oh, he's not a handyman. Well, what am I then? I'm a flunky, that's all. Somebody to make excuses to your drunk friends here and you talk about my man, Carl, like I'm some piece of property. You have more sense than that, Carl. Who are you to talk to me about sense? A nurse that married the doctor. A dumb dame who's got some money and now doesn't even know what to do with it. No wonder your husband got himself a girl. Baby! Don't let her get to you, baby. She's just making scared talk. And she has a reason to. Three years I've been here. You never even asked if I had a wife. Is that a reason for robbing me? You struck out, sweetie, so why push it? Now write down the combination. Uh -uh. I work too hard for that money. Six years in Alvarado Street, ten years in Beverly Hills, 16 hours a day. It's the best children's clinic west of New York. I managed it, and I invested his money. I understand how you feel, Julie, about money. I wanted it myself. And when I got it, I quit work to spend it. But it's no good this way. You can't get away with it, and you know it. <laughs> no. You're cute, sweetie. You really are. But my baby's no doctor with money to invest. And you can't buy beach houses on quarter tips. Now get writing. You don't believe I'll kill you, do you? You might, accidentally. But you won't do it deliberately. Not as long as you don't have the combination. It's a very expensive safe and a very strong one. That true, Carl? Yeah. Mm. Smells good, the ocean. Like a lot of fish. Like a whole lot of fish. Baby, how far is the terrace above the rocks? Oh, 100 feet, maybe. Come on outside and show me the scenery, sweetie. Carl says you can see Catalina on a clear day. Oh, Julie. You think I'm a kook, don't you? I just get excited. Makes me look a little far out. But you like me that way, don't you, sweetie? Come on. You ever been in an airplane? Yes. Oh, that's the greatest. Way up high, on top of everything. Some people are afraid of up high, but I'm not. 
How about you? Are you afraid of higher? <laughs> you know, I once saw a man fall off a building. He just kind of let go. And he went over and over and over like a falling bird. Until... Could it be? Maybe. Answer it. Now you stay put, sweetie. The Andrews resident. Tom, shut up! Shut up! Uh, no, Mrs. Carley, she's not here. She's on her way to London. Yes, it was in pretty much of a hurry. Uh, she was sorry she had a Monsieur Luau. Yes, I'll be closing the house tomorrow. Good night. You all right? Yeah, sure. Oh, that was all wasted, sweetie. That wasn't Tom after all. He's not gonna call. Nobody's going to call again. What if I give you the money? How do I know I won't end up on the rocks out there? Well, money, that's all we want. Now, that's the simple truth, sweetie. All right, I'll give you the money. On one condition. Leave me here. Tie me up if you have to. And then when you go, call the police and tell them where I am. That's all right with me. my breakfast in bed this morning, my good man. Come on, get up from there. Let's get on with it. Who makes this bed? I had it made until this morning. That's another thing I want. Somebody to make my bed. Open the safe, sweetie. Feel it, baby. It's real. <sighs> nice new money. That's right. There's no difference between you. You've got it, she wants it. All right, you've got it. Now tie me up and get out. Oh. <laughs> get out, sweetie? Oh, we can't do that. I'm sorry, sweetie. Julie. You stay out of this, baby. What will you do if we go? I'd go to London. I'd forget the whole thing. You can't go to London. We've got the money. And you can't go back to good old Tom. So without the money, baby, you're just nowhere. Leave her alone. Let's tie her up and get out of... Now, look, we never talked about killing. So it's a new idea. Look at her. Do you think she's going to sit still for this? She'll have the cops all over us before we even spend a penny. Julie, no! Julie, yes! I won't do it! You want to go back to jail? Is that what you want? You may be a big hunk of man, baby, but you're stupid. Shut up! I said no! Oh, did I hurt him? Did I hurt my baby? You know what has to be done, baby. But you don't have to do it. I'll do it. Are you going to let her, Carl? Do you hate me that much? Sweetie, hate has nothing to do with it. Not for you, for Carl. He has to hate me. Because every time he spends that dollar, he'll remember what he did to get it. Oh, you're deep, but it won't work. My baby wants his money as much as I do. Do you, Carl? Do you hate me enough for that? I do what I gotta do. No, no, you do what she tells you to do. Oh, you're a great one to talk. You pushed your man and you got what you wanted. Well, now I'm pushing mine. 
As my baby said, there's very little difference between you and I. Oh, there's a big difference, sweetie. I want all I can get, and you're willing to settle for half. Half? We have enough. Enough? What's enough? Trying to buy your way out? That's right. What have you got? Furs. Where? In there. Is that true, Carl? Yeah. What kind? Ning, chinchilla. Get him. The money and the furs for my life? Sure, sweetie. Carl? Yeah, go ahead, get him. gun on the bed. No! Give me that oh, gun! Julie, Please Julie, no, no! She's shot. Get her a doctor. Get her a doctor, please! The International Airport. Global Airlines reservation desk, please. Yes. Yes, I'm please. Operator, cancel it, please. I've changed my mind. Anders, please. Oh, it, Tom, it's it's me, Marion. No, 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 I'm all right. I, uh... No, no, I'm not going. Well, something happened here tonight. I... I, I looked in a mirror and I... I didn't like what I saw. Oh, Tom, money's important, but it's not that important. I... I'd like to have my old job back if you'll have me. What? Oh, yes, Tom, yes. And hurry, darling, hurry. The moral of the story is very simple. Don't hire Michael and Sarah as your butler, and if Julie London rings your doorbell, and if you're a woman, just tell her to go away quietly. My thanks to both of them for their compelling performances. Join us again next week. Good night. <laughs>